Hello everybody and welcome to the Alien vs Predator Galaxy YouTube channel. This is Aaron Percival aka Corporal Hicks and in this video we're taking a dive into the history of Prometheus. Prometheus was a film that had a lot of Alien fans unsure of what they would be getting when they walked into that cinema. It started life as an Alien prequel, then it became an original science fiction film known as Prometheus. For a long time it was simply not clear if Prometheus would be related to Alien at all. Of course it turned out it was, but the lead up to the film's release was an unclear time and an interesting film development that to this day still interests me. So in this video we're going to explore how that untitled Alien prequel eventually became Prometheus. The possibility of an Alien prequel was brought up as early as the late 1970s. The official Alien magazine published in December of 1979 reported that one of the possible avenues that was being explored for the next Alien film would be a prequel rather than a sequel, telling the tale of the space jockey and ending where Alien began with the arrival of the Nostromo crew. Of course this take on a new Alien film would not emerge as the sequels veered away from the mysterious extraterrestrial victim. The notion of a film exploring the untold history of Alien in more depth is something that has existed in Ridley Scott's brain since he finished work on Alien. Talking to Omni's screen flight screen fantasies back in 1984, he commented on his desire to delve into the history of the Alien. It certainly should explain what the Alien is and where it comes from. That will be tough because it will require dealing with other planets, worlds, civilizations. Because obviously the alien did come from some sort of civilization. The alien was presented, really, as one of the last survivors of Mars, a planet named after the god of war. The alien may be one of the last descendants of some long lost self destructed group of beings. Over the intervening years, Ridley Scott would occasionally talk about his desire to return to the Alien franchise to specifically explore the space jockey. During one such occasion on the commentary for the 20th anniversary DVD release of Alien for the Alien Legacy box set, Ridley Scott mused about his ideas behind the space jockey and the derelict. I always wanted to go back and make an Alien 5 or 6 where we find out where they came from and go and answer the question who are they. Mars is too close, they can't be gods of war, but the theory was, in my head, that this was an aircraft carrier, a battle wagon of a civilization, and the eggs were a cargo that was essentially weapons, like a large form of bacterial or biomechanoid warfare. Following the tepid release of Alien Resurrection in 1997, movement on a new Alien film was virtually non-existent. Occasionally, Ridley Scott, James Cameron or Sigourney Weaver would give the possibility a sentence or two in interviews, but it wasn't until over a decade later in 2009 that a new Alien film was looking like a reality. Having been impressed by his work on two science fiction scripts, Passengers and Shadow 19, Scott Free Productions invited relative newcomer John Spates to a meeting with Scott Free's president, Michael Costigan, to discuss potential ideas for Spates and the company to work together on. Late in the meeting, Costigan brought up the topic of Alien, specifically an Alien prequel. It was a universe that Ridley Scott wanted to return to, but had not been able to crack the story. Costigan wanted to know if Spates had any ideas about it. Speaking of the meeting, Spates remarked that it was interesting because it was a question I had never asked myself or been asked before, and certainly nothing I had prepared for the meeting. But I found that when the question was asked, I had opinions that were in fact pretty strong opinions, so I just started riffing. Spate spoke for the next 30 or 40 minutes, talking about the mysteries left unexplored after Alien, mysteries that would revolve around the space jockey. I said, well, you have to go back to the shipwreck where it all sprang. You'd have to look at the dead giant, the dead space jockey, the dead giant in the chair with the elephantine proposed this rib cage. At the end of the meeting, Costigan asked Spates to write down his story ideas, which would be known as Alien 01, the master narrative, so that they could be passed on to Ridley Scott who was finishing post-production on Robin Hood at the time. In less than two weeks, that story concept had worked its way from a document in the hands of Ridley Scott all the way to the top of 20th Century Fox and into the start of a film production. Ridley Scott's brother, the late Tony Scott, was the one to reveal to the world that they were working on an Alien prequel. In May of 2009, whilst talking to Collider about taking of Pelham 123, Tony Scott announced that the Alien prequel was going to be directed by Carl Rinch, one of the advertisement directors at Scott Free. Ridley Scott was eventually announced as being attached to direct. 
Early reports made it sound as if 20th Century Fox were not confident in moving forward with the prequel without Scott in the director's chair, but it became quite clear that it was Ridley Scott's own excitement towards the project that led to him taking over as director. Spates wrote the first draft in three and a half weeks, something he said to be a personal record. Following that, Spates wrote another four significant drafts, with many interim submissions over the next year or so. By April 23rd, 2010, Spates was on his fourth draft, most likely the draft available online under the title of Alien Engineers. When that script leaked online, Alien vs Predator Galaxy spoke to John Spates, who confirmed that the script was one of the later, but not the latest, draft he did. Around 2019, AVP Galaxy was also able to get our hands on another draft of the prequel, titled Alien Zero One Genesis. This was an iteration of the fifth draft prior to Lindelof's involvement, though I don't believe it was the final, as when Lindelof came on board in mid-2010, the current draft was titled simply Alien Zero. In terms of differences between the two drafts, the most significant was that the subsequent draft would lose Wayland's wheel, the space station in orbit of Earth, and the underwater excavation from the start of the script. In Alien Engineers, Watts, who would later be renamed Shaw, and Holloway uncover evidence of a pattern in the evolution of the Earth itself and of mankind that suggests extraterrestrial intervention, the engineers. They convince Wayland of their evidence, and he funds their exploration of what they believe to be the engineers' home world, which turns out to be LV-426. When they arrive there, they find a system of complex pyramids that are actually terraforming stations as well as laboratories. While exploring, they find the remnants of engineers, and eventually stumble upon a protoform of the aliens, as well as the traditional aliens themselves, contained within the cargo bay of a juggernaut hidden beneath one of the pyramids. You can listen to a more thorough and detailed breakdown of the Alien Engineers script in the 33rd episode of the AVP Galaxy podcast. Both the Alien Engineers and Alien Zero One Genesis scripts are also available to download from the download section of avpgalaxy.net, I'll leave links to both below. The prequel went under many titles over the course of development until they finally settled on Prometheus. It had been known as Alien Engineers, Alien Zero One Genesis, Alien Origins, LV426, BIM Roman Numerals, Paradise, and Alien Tomb of the Gods. John Spate spoke about the prequel's ever-changing title and eventual settlement on Prometheus in the Name Conundrum Enhancement Pod on the Prometheus Blu-ray, elaborating that it was just because of what was happening inside the story. The engineers were becoming so important, and the aliens were becoming an aspect of their danger and moving out of the spotlight. The studio wanted to reframe the whole thing in terms of the engineers. What if we just pulled aliens out of the title and pushed the monster even further back? and Prometheus was just the name that came out of that shift. The last change was to change the name of the ship, the Magellan, to the Prometheus to give that more foundation. That also made sense given the mentality of the people who were sending it out. They're looking for Prometheus. During the months of development on the early days of the film, Ridley Scott would often throw out ideas that would require John Spates to work those ideas into the script, to figure out a way to give those ideas meaning within the story. From the very beginning of his involvement in the production, Spates placed importance on making the space jockey's story intrinsically involved with that of humanity and our history. Speaking of his writing mentality in The Furious Gods, Spates said, What do you do if you're going to go and do a movie about that guy and his comrades on some big starship? They look ridiculous, they'll be unintentionally funny, and we won't relate to them because they're not people. They're going to speak some language we're not going to understand. How do you do it? It seemed very plain to me that the only way you could dive into the story of the space jockeys is, is their story was ultimately ours, as if it led back to us. They needed to be intrinsically involved in the human story, in human history, and I thought, in our evolution. It became very much a story based around the concept of creation and evolution, the engineers with humanity and the aliens, and then humanities with the synthetics, specifically David 8. While the majority of Spates' basic structure would remain the same throughout production, even through Lindelof's subsequent involvement in rewrites, many of the specific details would change. For example, throughout Spates' draft, the film would have taken place on LV-426, but this was changed to LV-223. Another aspect that changed several times was the Juggernaut and the Pyramid Complex. 
The first incarnations of the script had the crew of the Magellan detect the same beacon that the Nostromo would receive years later, and set down to find the derelict craft already on the moon's surface. The primary setting would have then been between the Magellan and the derelict itself. They would explore the shipwreck and discover the remains of the engineer crew, a live crew member, and also come across recognisable ancestors of the beast, the demon from Alien. Over subsequent rewrites, a pyramid appeared beside the derelict, very much a callback to the pyramids from the earlier scripts of Alien that was ultimately dropped and then merged with the derelict. Eventually, the derelict would be moved underground as a hidden part of the pyramid and become known as the Juggernaut. When Spates had reached the fourth major draft, around April 2010, production crew began to be hired and work commenced on designing the film. Spates would often find himself in the artist's room discussing specific scenes from the script, and he would come back to the office the next day and find paintings of a scene he had just written the day before. As Michael Ellenberg, executive producer for Prometheus, said in The Furious Gods, the concept work on this movie was sort of his own script work, and that was script work taking place alongside the actual script work. Damon Lindelof's involvement came when everybody was ready to move from pre-production to production. Being an unproduced writer, Spates had been expecting to see a better known writer become involved to provide some polish on the script, and to have a more recognisable name attached to the writing credit. Speaking about Lindelof's involvement, Spates explained in The Furious Gods that it really happened when we were in the home stretch, when we think we're ready to go. The studio had two thoughts, let's dial back the alien monsters and lean more on the engineers, and let's get a known writer on this and bring it home. In an interview with MTV News, the then CEO and chairman of 20th Century Fox, Tom Rothman, spoke about how he was the one from the studio to push the removal of the aliens from Prometheus. The easy thing to have done would have been to just make an alien prequel, and that's where it started as an idea. But as we talked about the last time, it evolved, and Ridley's ideas are much bigger than that. It really is a brand new film. One of the writers that was contacted was Damon Lindelof, who was very well known at that time for his work on the television series Lost. Ridley Scott got in touch with Lindelof and sent him Spates' latest and fifth major draft, then known as Alien Zero, and asked him to take a look and see what he thought. Throughout the writing process it had become more and more apparent that the film was transforming into a story that revolved around the space jockeys, the engineers, rather than the alien themselves. John Spates explained that the further we pushed into the development of the story, the bigger the engineers got, and the more marginalised the original alien monster became, until that monster became a kind of feature, a grace note in a larger story that was about humanity meeting its maker. Upon reading Spates' Alien Zero, Lindelof came to a similar conclusion, and as part of his response to Ridley Scott, shared his opinion that Spates' script was relying too much on the traditional alien elements, when he believed it should focus on the original aspects, specifically the engineers. So when I finished it, I went into my office and I wrote an email to Ridley and his producing partners, and this response was basically my job interview. I wrote maybe a 4 or 5 paragraph email, saying here are all the things I love about it, I think there are some incredible set pieces here, I love the fundamental idea behind the movie, I feel like it's a cool think piece, but I think it's relying a bit too heavily on the alien stuff that we've seen now 5 or 6 times in different movies, chest bursting and face hugging in Xenomorphs and I just feel that your idea is so strong and the characters can be made so strong that we don't need any of that stuff. That isn't to say that this isn't a movie that should be set in that universe, but I look at it more like a story that is running parallel to the original Alien, so that if there was a sequel to this movie it would not be Alien, it would be Prometheus 2, and then Prometheus 2 is parallel to Aliens, and here's how we could do that. And so I sent off that email and I got into my bed. The next day Lindelof was asked to meet with Ridley Scott, where they discussed Lindelof's email. Lindelof made it quite clear to Ridley and the other producers that his interest lay in the non-alien aspects of Spates' script. Discussing his early involvement on Prometheus with The Hollywood Reporter, Lindelof said, I have to act like I belong here and start explaining to him, look, embedded in this script are amazing ideas and if you want to hire me, I play up this stuff and play down this stuff, but I don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater because obviously there's a lot of great things in John's script. And that's my pitch, and Ridley responded, and then we went to Fox and pitched to them, and they responded, and in all great traditions you're told that this is going to be a six week gig, and it was a year of my life. Having gotten the job, the next several weeks consisted of Scott and Lindelof sitting together, five days a week for three or four hours just talking. Lindelof would ask him questions to understand what it was Ridley Scott wanted from the movie, what he wanted it to be about. 
one of the things that Ridley Scott wanted from Lindelof's involvement was more ambiguity. Not long before the release of Prometheus, during a roundtable interview with DIY Hey You Guys and Bleeding Cool, Damon Lindelof mused about his work on Lost being a factor in his involvement with Prometheus. I think Ridley's instinct kept being to pull back, and I would say to him, Ridley, I'm still eating shit year after Lost is over for all the things we didn't directly spell out. Are you sure you want to do this? And he would say, I would rather have people fighting about it and not know than spell it out. That's just more interesting to me. Maybe that's why he sought me out in the first place. Lindelof's work on Prometheus took place throughout July 2010 and into the start of August. Lindelof turned in his first draft after four or five weeks of work in mid-September. These rewrites would retain a lot of the core elements of John Spates' work. It still included very obvious allusions to the alien and to the alien life cycle, but stripped the script of the aliens themselves. It would instead focus on the original creatures from Spates' drafts such as the Scarabs, the Hammerpedes, and the mutated Firefield. Lindelof would also play up the creation angle, making it a story about searching out man's creator to gain more life. It was a deliberate reversal of the theme of Ridley Scott's other landmark science fiction film, Blade Runner, in which man's creation comes seeking its creator to ask for more life. Prometheus, known to the world as the untitled alien prequel, entered active production towards the end of 2010. On the 14th of January 2011, Prometheus was then announced to the world. And the rest, as they say, is history. As always, I just want to thank everybody for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down in the comment section below and I'll try to get back to you. If this is your first time on the channel, please head back to the main page and take a look at some of our other content. And if you're new to Alien vs Predator Galaxy as an outlet, you can check out the hub of our activity on avpgalaxy.net where we've got uh, news posts, uh, editorial articles, reviews, a message board, and we're also on all the normal social media outlets such as Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. We also run a bi-monthly, normally, bi-monthly podcast that is accessible on all the usual podcast players. You can find us as Alien vs Predator Galaxy Podcast versus as in BS. This has been Corporal Hicks, and thank you for watching.